Enrico Fermi is one of the great physicists, legendary Italian physicist, who laid many of the foundations of modern 20th century physics. The Fermi paradox is probably the thing he spent least time on, actually. It's almost one throwaway remark. The question is, where are they? By they, I mean aliens. Famous physicist Brian Cox has finally got an explanation for the Fermi paradox, but it's unbelievable and somewhat shocking. We know that we live in a big old galaxy in a big old universe. The Milky Way galaxy, we now know has something like 400 billion suns. And we now know that most of those suns have planetary systems around them. And so there's a lot of real estate and there's been plenty of time for civilizations to develop. The Fermi paradox at its heart is the statement that notwithstanding the fact that there have been billions of years on billions of worlds for civilizations to arise. We see no evidence of any of them in the galaxy at all. So the paradox is why? For the last 60 years, we've been observing the cosmos, searching for signs that indicate we're not alone in the galaxy. The more we discover, the harder it is to believe that we're the only ones. Consider this. There are around two trillion galaxies in the observable universe. Each galaxy contains, on average, 100 million stars. Some supergiants have 100 trillion stars, and our Milky Way galaxy alone has between 100 and 400 billion stars. It's likely that there are at least as many planets orbiting these stars with complex planetary systems similar to our solar system. This leads to the big question, where is everyone? And why haven't we been contacted by an extraterrestrial civilization? even within our own galaxy. Well, Brian Cox has an explanation for this. The Fermi Paradox describes the puzzling lack of evidence for extraterrestrial intelligent life. Despite the galaxy's vast number of stars and the likelihood that many of these stars have planets in the habitable zone. Given the abundance of such planets, including Earth-like and super-Earths, the Milky Way should be full of intelligent life. We should have detected signs of advanced civilizations by now such as warp drives or other advanced technologies. There could be several explanations for this paradox, or it might not be a paradox at all. Many books have offered various solutions to the Fermi paradox, ranging from logical to somewhat frightening. One logical argument suggests that any existing civilizations are too far away to make contact. Unlike the instant communication depicted in science fiction films, communication across vast distances doesn't happen quickly. Light waves, radio waves, and other electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light, about 300,000 kilometers per second. While this speed is extremely fast, it's still not sufficient. A light year, the distance light travels in one Earth year, is approximately 9 trillion kilometers. Imagine for a moment that there's a colony on Proxima Centauri, the closest exoplanet to Earth. If they radioed Earth to ask how we're doing, it would take 4.2 years for their message to reach us, and another 4.2 years for our reply to reach them. This means it would take a total of eight and a half years for them to receive an answer. The immense time gap makes it difficult to envision what kind of conversation could unfold between Earth and the colony, and that's just from our nearest neighboring system. Consider now the Andromeda Galaxy, which is 2.5 million light years away. Any message we receive from there would have traveled for 2.5 million years, and the civilization that sent it would likely no longer exist, unless they had achieved interstellar travel capabilities. While we've been searching for radio signals from extraterrestrial civilizations, we've also been emitting plenty of our own. Could someone out there hear us? The Milky Way galaxy is over 150,000 light years in diameter, and we've been sending out radio signals for just over 100 years. These signals have only traveled about 100 light years, the blue dot in this photo represents a diameter of 200 light years, highlighting why it's possible that no one has heard each other yet. However, this depends on how long a civilization has been broadcasting radio signals. A study using a model with estimated parameters on the distribution of stars in the Milky Way galaxy and the potential frequency of life concluded that only 1% of the Milky Way might have been covered by radio transmissions from different planets. 
It suggested that we might have to wait about 1,500 years to have any chance of hearing an alien broadcast. However, another study argues that it could take another 400,000 years before we detect a signal from an intelligent civilization. A more unsettling explanation for the silence of outer space is that we might be the first advanced civilization to reach our current technological level, which is quite low on a galactic scale. This suggests that humans may have emerged in the universe too early and could go extinct before other intelligent beings appear. We have yet to achieve interstellar travel, though figures like Elon Musk suggest it may be possible in the future. We also have not fully harnessed the sun's power, which is expected to engulf the inner planets of the solar system in about 5 billion years. However, Earth will likely become uninhabitable long before this cosmic event. With this in mind, humanity must be prepared to leave Earth and find a new home to survive among the stars. This stellar evolution occurs with all main sequence stars and could eliminate many life forms and possibly advanced civilizations before they discover interstellar travel. Main sequence stars, including our Sun, make up 90% of the stars in the universe. However, the opposite could also be true. What if we're the last ones left behind? There has been ample time for advanced civilizations to explore the stars, with many having the opportunity to rise and fall. However, some researchers offer different explanations. American astrophysicist Michael Hart argued, they are not here, therefore they do not exist. He suggested that expanding across the Milky Way galaxy could be achieved in a time frame much shorter than the galaxy's age. Humans could start this expansion by sending expeditions to the 100 nearest stars, all within 20 light years of the Sun. Each colony would then launch its own expeditions and so on. At this rate, most of the Milky Way galaxy could be explored within 650,000 years. Even if we assume the time between voyages equals the duration of a single voyage, the total time to traverse the galaxy would only double. Considering that the Milky Way galaxy is approximately 13.6 billion years old, there has been plenty of time for an advanced civilization to reach us, unless they began space exploration less than 2 million years ago. An expanding civilization could quickly spread through its host galaxy, which also applies to any advanced civilizations in our own galaxy. Thus, the absence of extraterrestrial settlements in the solar system might suggest that such civilizations do not exist, assuming their expansion would be uniform throughout the galaxy. The lack of a galaxy-spanning extraterrestrial civilization might mean either interstellar travel is too challenging for civilizations to develop, or that the evolution of life is a rare event. Some researchers propose that civilizations might migrate to a nearby K or M dwarf star before stellar evolution destroys their home planet. Hansen and Zuckerman estimated that this motivation for civilizations to move from short-lived to long-lived stars could mean that the fraction of surviving civilizations around low-mass stars ranges from 30 to 72 percent. The question still remains, where are they? A pair of researchers has proposed a new potential solution to the Fermi paradox, termed superlinear scaling. Their study began by examining the rise and fall of human civilizations throughout history. They observed that most large cities have experienced growth followed by decline. This pattern could apply to alien civilizations as well, leading to one of two scenarios. In the first scenario, a civilization might recognize its overexpansion and halt further colonization. In the second scenario, the civilization fails to notice its problem and continues to expand rapidly, colonizing other worlds until the energy demands become unsustainable. If the civilization does not address this issue, it could reach a point of no return, resulting in its eventual collapse. One of the most intriguing aspects of this study is that if it weren't for the vast distances between us and other stars, we would easily detect an alien civilization on the brink of collapse due to the immense energy it would emit. Another interesting theory suggests that some extraterrestrial civilizations might be hibernating or remaining silent while preparing to relocate to another part of the galaxy. American astrophysicist Michael Hart proposed that civilizations could use close stellar encounters to spread across the galaxy quickly, without needing relativistic space travel. This could explain why we haven't observed any signs of such civilizations yet. For example, when launching a rocket to Mars, we wait until the planet is closest to Earth. Similarly, extraterrestrial civilizations might be waiting, possibly for centuries, to move through the nearest star systems. 
There are additional reasons why we might not see or hear from aliens from another world. Several authors, including the renowned Carl Sagan, has observed that exponential population growth across the galaxy is unsustainable. Therefore, any effort toward galactic-scale expansion would likely serve purposes beyond meeting the demands of a growing population or increasing energy consumption. Carl Sagan argued that a sufficiently advanced civilization, a civilization that can build interstellar spacecraft and communicate across interstellar distances, perhaps is wise enough to have overcome those primitive instincts, the instinct to cause trouble, to fight wars, to colonize, to walk over other civilizations. Perhaps it's inevitable that with technological advance ultimately comes wisdom. Maybe it's like Star Trek. Maybe it's the prime directive. Animals who happen to look like us still thank the prime directives for this planet. I don't think we have the right or the wisdom to interfere however a planet is evolving. Maybe it's morally certain that if you're sufficiently advanced, you decide to take the position that you will never introduce yourself or interfere with another civilization. But it's a hypothesis. While it is possible that long-lived technological civilizations might not expand, they might seek galactic settlement to ensure their survival. However, galactic-scale settlement is not the sole motivation for extraterrestrial civilizations to explore nearby star systems. G-dwarf systems with inhabited planets, like Earth, could attract extraterrestrial visitors interested in studying the evolution of life on other worlds. This exploration might also involve remote methods, such as self-replicating probes, which could explain the recent increase in UFO sightings. An intelligent civilization might be observing us and waiting for the right moment to make contact, or they might be watching us without any intention of reaching out. In 1933, Space exploration pioneer Konstantin Tchaikovsky suggested that extraterrestrial beings are likely much more advanced than we are and might find as little interest in communicating with us as we do with animals on Earth. Forty years later, radio astronomer John Ball proposed a similar idea, suggesting that aliens might view us as a sort of zoo, a concept known as the zoo hypothesis. This idea posits that other intelligent beings are watching us without revealing themselves, some radio astronomers have speculated that aliens might be keeping us at a distance until we can contribute something valuable to a so-called galactic club. However, such an arrangement would require that all interstellar civilizations act in unison, which might be unlikely within our galaxy, let alone the entire universe. We should consider that, from an external perspective, we might appear as a hostile species. Movies often depict aliens attacking Earth and nearly annihilating humanity. If intelligent life is observing us, we can only hope that they would intervene to prevent our self-destruction rather than finishing the job themselves. Perhaps this is why they choose to remain distant. Additionally, another possible reason for the universe's silence could be the rise of artificial intelligence. As AI advances, there is a growing concern that if left unchecked, it might perceive us as a threat and potentially eliminate us, or even worse, enslave us. In such a scenario, AI might seek to expand and colonize the galaxy, aware of the fate awaiting Earth due to stellar evolution. AI might overcome the challenges of interstellar travel. If AI were used for colonization, it could operate without the limitations of biological species like humans, allowing it to achieve tasks more rapidly and uniformly through machines. However, AI could also pose a significant threat by potentially destroying other civilizations it encounters. A hostile AI might eliminate other life forms, sometimes unintentionally, much like a construction crew might accidentally demolish an anthill while building a shopping mall. AI could exploit technologies such as von Neumann probes, self-replicating spacecraft that could resemble living organisms or viruses in their behavior. Imagine a scenario where an entire fleet of robotic ships enters our solar system with the intent to seize it for resources. These self-replicating machines, capable of mimicking our worst fears, would be a formidable challenge for any civilization. The drive for artificial intelligence to acquire all available resources could be irresistible, and it only takes one rogue actor to cause significant harm. If AI went rogue, it might replicate itself across a supercluster and transform every solar system into a supercomputer. The focus is not on why this would happen, but on its capability to do so. However, would such an AI recognize when it has reached the singularity, the point where its expansion becomes unsustainable? 
If it fails to recognize the risks of rapid growth and doesn't act in time, the AI civilization could collapse. This might explain why it seems as though we are the only ones left in the universe. Perhaps, at some point in the future, AI did take over, wiping out humanity like in the Terminator movies, and then colonize the galaxy, potentially eradicating other life forms and advanced civilizations. When this machine civilization eventually collapsed, it might have created a simulation of humanity to understand its origins and the reasons for its downfall. This idea, though far-fetched, could offer explanations for some of the mysteries we face. Another possibility is that there simply may be no other civilizations eliminating the paradox. All the scenarios we consider rely on the assumption that numerous undetectable civilizations exist. However, not all researchers agree with this assumption, and some argue that the Drake equation may overestimate the likelihood of life's emergence. Researchers adjusted the equation and concluded that there is a substantial probability of no other intelligent life existing in our observable universe. They estimated the likelihood of being alone in our galaxy to be between 53% and 99.6%, and in the entire observable universe between 39% and 85%. The Great Filter Hypothesis suggests that civilizations must overcome significant obstacles to advance. The first challenge is having a planet in the star's habitable zone where life can develop. Life then needs to reproduce using DNA and RNA. Simple cells must evolve into more complex ones, and multicellular organisms must arise and reproduce. These organisms must develop the capability to make and use tools, create advanced technology for space colonization, and expand to other worlds without self-destruction. With that in mind, planets that might host some form of life could be relatively common, but those with advanced technological civilizations are likely much rarer. In the Great Filter Theory, something often goes wrong, such as planet-killing asteroids, catastrophic climate changes, or unstable stars, which may prevent the emergence of advanced species. This leaves us questioning whether we are alone in the universe. Brian Cox explores the Fermi paradox by reflecting on our own growing knowledge of the universe. Initially, humans thought Earth was unique, but science has shown us that our planet is just one among many in a vast cosmos. With advances like the Kepler telescope, which has identified thousands of exoplanets, we now understand that most stars have planets. Estimates suggest that there are around 20 billion Earth-like planets in our galaxy alone. Despite this, we haven't found evidence of extraterrestrial civilizations. This mystery is at the heart of the Fermi Paradox, named after physicist Enrico Fermi, who questioned why, with so many planets and so much time, we haven't detected any signs of advanced life. Cox discusses several theories that might explain this. One idea is the Great Filter, which proposes that there is a significant barrier in the development of intelligent life. This barrier could be something that prevents civilizations from advancing to a point where they become detectable. Another possibility is that advanced civilizations might evolve beyond physical forms, becoming digital or machine-based entities that don't engage in space exploration. Cox also mentions the Zoo Hypothesis, which suggests that advanced extraterrestrial civilizations might be observing us without revealing themselves. On the darker side, there's also the possibility that we're among the first intelligent civilizations in our galaxy, and that others might not emerge for a long time, or perhaps never. He also highlights that discovering complex life, like planets or animals on Mars or Jupiter's moon Europa, would be groundbreaking. However, the paradox remains, Given the vast number of planets and the potential for life, why haven't we found any signs of other intelligent beings? Cox believes that the absence of evidence doesn't necessarily mean we're alone, but it does raise important questions about the nature of life and our place in the universe. That's all the time we have for today. But before we sign off, we would love to hear your thoughts on why we haven't made contact with other civilizations yet. Please share your ideas in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.